I am Muhammad Ali, lecturer in English from Department of English, Government Postgraduate College, Attic, for all in classes. Today is 15th August 2020. This online class is for second year and we are studying Goodbye Mr. Chaps. Today, I will uh, present uh, the answers of short questions. Previously, I also presented a uh, few questions and their answers. And today, I will also uh, provide answer to the questions from chapter number one. So, it is continuation of previous lecture regarding short questions and answers of chapter number one. Let us start uh, from page number one and the question is, uh, this is question number 17 from page number one. Why did Mr. Chips keep the brutal time instead of green which time. So, the answer is Mr. Chips kept the Brookfield time instead of green which time because he had timed the activities of his life according to the bells of Brookfield as he lived at Mrs. Wicket's house across the road near the school. Next question, question number 18. How did Mr. Chips end his day's activities at Mrs. Wicket's? So, the answer is Mr. Chips wound up the clock after the last bell, put the wire guard in front of the fire, turned out the gas and carried a detective novel to bed. In this way, he ended his day's activities at Mrs. Wicket's. Next question, question number 19. What did Mr. Chips used to do in his old age? The answer is, in his old age, Mr. Chips used to sit by the fire. He drank a cup of tea and listened to the school bells. He used to read a detective novel at night. Next question, question number 20. What did Mr. Chips do before going to bed? The answer is, before going to bed, he wound up the clock and put the wire guard in front of the fire. Then he turned out the gas and carried a detective novel to bed. Next question, question number 21. When and why did Mr. Chips join Brookfield? The answer is, after teaching a year at Melbury, Mr. Chips joined Brookfield in 1870. He disliked the previous school as his discipline was not good there. Moreover, he had been dragged there a good deal. Next page, page number 2. So, I will present the questions and their answer from page number 2. Question number 22, who made a century when Chips came for the interview? The answer is, when Chips came for the interview, Brookfield was playing a cricket match against Barnhurst. One of the Barnhurst boys, a chubby little fellow, made a brilliant century. Question number 23, who was Mr. Weatherby? What kind of person or headmaster Mr. Weatherby was? The answer is Mr. Weatherby was the headmaster of the school in 1870. He was very kind and fatherly person. He was very courteous. He interviewed Mr. Chips and gave him useful advice for his betterment as a teacher. He died during the summer vacation in 1870. 
next question question number 24 describe mr chips first meeting with mr weatherby the answer is mr chips had a very pleasant meeting with mr weatherby who was an old man then and remained very courteous and fatherly to mr chips he gave very useful advice to mr chips about improving the discipline of his class question number 25 how did mr weatherby advise mr chips the answer is mr weatherby advised mr chips regarding discipline in the class he advised him to take up a firm and strong attitude from the beginning and not to let anyone play tricks with him question number 26 what was the real name of mr chips the answer is the real name of mr chips was chipping question number 27 what was the appearance of mr chips in his youth the answer is mr chips was a fair complexion young man he had side whiskers and high collars he dressed himself according to the fashion of his age question number 28 how did mr chips take his first class the answer is mr chips took his first class that proved a difficult job for him because the hall was full of 500 naughty boys ready to attack him he assumed a scowl or frown to hide his nervousness coli dropped a desk lid chips quickly caught and punishment him in this way he controlled first class question number 29 what was the opinion of mr chips about his students mr chips called his students unprincipled ruffians he said that they were little beggars individually but as a mob just pitiless and implacable or cruel next page page number 3 i will present questions and answer from page number 3 question number 30 who was coli why and how did chips punish him coli was the first boy punished by chips because he had dropped the desk lid while chips was taking his first class chips asked him to write 100 lines as a punishment he became an elder man of london and a baronet later question number 31 what did chips say when the third coli the grandson of the first coli arrived at brookfield the answer is when the third coli the grandson of the first coli arrived at brookfield mr chips told him that he was a splendid example of inherited tradition his grandfather was a stupid fellow because he could never understand latin grammar and rules of ablative absolute mr chips also told him that his father was not much better but he believed that he the grandson the third coli was the biggest fool of the lot thank you very much